These are the new X-Real 1s, which just took home an innovation award from this year's CES. And were even shared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, thanks to Linus from LTT. And the reason for all that is because X-Real managed to cram their own X1 spatial computing chip inside, which finally gives us native 3 degrees of freedom head tracking at an ultra low latency. But it goes further with an integrated menu, programmable buttons, IPD adjustment, and much more. This is Sergio AM. Welcome to It Came From A Box. In the box we get all our paperwork, a branded cleaning cloth, two additional nose pads in small and large, medium comes attached to the glasses. Then we have their hard shell carrying case with a large flat base. And inside we have a USB-C cable that's nicely braided with one angled end for the glasses. And finally, we have the glasses themselves. Like the previous versions, they still resemble sunglasses, which I think is important to keep to since it's this kind of socially acceptable look. So when you're out and about, you're less likely to stand out in a crowd and they're going to go further with this thin detachable frame that you'll eventually be able to swap out for additional styles so you can customize their look. Compared to their previous Air 2 Pros, they're slightly, very slightly heavier, but with a thinner profile. As we've come to expect with X-Real, build quality is stellar. Materials are top notch. They have this hard plastic on the outside with what feels like a softer matte coated plastic on the inside, which is what your face is against. And that also helps protect the optics when folded down. We've got precise and solid construction all throughout, along with really nice buttons that stick out just enough to help locate. And they've got a very nice click to them. There's just a lot of attention to detail here, which gives them that premium feel. In here, we have Sony Micro OLED displays, one per eye, in this birdbath optic setup with a slightly increased 50 degree field of view. Yes, we're still in HD, 1920 by 1080, that at this distance from your eyes looks sharp as a tack and extremely smooth with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It has 600 nits of perceived brightness and three, let me get this right, electrochrom <laughs> electrochromic dimming levels. Think of them like an ND filter on a camera, which makes them usable in a well-lit room or even outdoors. But at their darkest, they still don't go completely pitch black like a cover would. As is the nature of these OLED screens, picture quality is stunning, with perfect blacks and infinite contrast ratios that, when paired with these lush and vibrant colors, provide a very realistic image that helps with immersion. If you're new to these, think of them like a wearable display that you can connect things to, but you also have to power them. Because of that, it only works with devices that support DisplayPort over USB-C. You can go with something like their Beam Pro or with a powered adapter. There's a lot of them out there, some for HDMI, so you can hook it up to your consoles. But the most common one is this USB-C powered one that even works with the Switch. But just note that regardless of what you go with, just make sure it's going to work with these glasses and the device you want to connect it to. Now let's talk about the star of the show, the X1 Spatial Computing Chip. This took them over two years of R&D, and with it, we finally get native three degrees of freedom head tracking. So now it can crunch all the numbers itself, no need for an additional device, and it has an MPT motion to photon latency of only three milliseconds, which to keep it simple means there's almost zero delay between your movement and the change you see in the glasses. This gives you that smooth and responsive experience when using those head tracking modes, which helps avoid things like dizziness and in some cases, motion sickness. Yeah, this chip is a game changer, but of course, you'll still need to connect it to a compatible device to actually see anything. Another new feature is one I've been waiting a long time for, and it's the addition of an integrated menu. In previous models, you had to memorize button mappings and shortcuts, but now we just double tap the red X button to access a visual, easy to navigate menu packed with settings. Sticking to the highlights, here, you can adjust things like the screen size that can go from 117 to 191 inches and a distance from 4 to 10 meters. We have a few options for things like enhancing brightness, display optimization, and color temperature. You can remap the click and long press of the shortcut button. 
Another very useful feature is a software-based IPD adjustment that can go from zero to either negative six or six plus, which helps eliminate any kind of blurry edges, but note that it does reduce the maximum display size and viewing angle. I absolutely love this menu. It's really well thought out. Yes, it's a small quality of life feature, but it makes a big difference in terms of usability. It also has a few different display modes. Same as before, we still have a 3D mode for side-by-side -side video. Then there's follow mode, which is what previous models had where the screen stays in front regardless of where you look. But now, thanks to the X1 chip, it has a stabilizer setting where instead of that immediate movement, it instead smoothly follows your gaze with a small amount of drag. That ease of movement helps avoid motion blur, which makes it much less jarring. Then you can choose a location in 3D space to pin your screen to with anchor mode. This is for those moments when you want to move your head to look around the screen. Feels much more natural, which should also help with eye strain, and that X1 chip does a solid job at keeping it in place. Next, we have an ultra wide mode where it expands the aspect ratio to 32 by nine, perfect for movies or multitasking when you're working with a lot of windows. And finally, we have one of my new favorites, side view mode, where you can shrink the image to either the top left or top right of your view. Then you can dim the screen so you can move around and do things while glancing at a video or app at the same time. Now with an awesome image, you need awesome sound, which you probably wouldn't expect from a pair of glasses, but you'd be surprised just how good these actually are. In use, they feel similar to over-ear headphones, and that's thanks to the quality of them, which also got an upgrade, and we now have sound by Bose, which gives us a very crisp, detailed, and balanced sound, even at the highest volume, without blowing out or distorting. And it also has Xreal Spatial Sound Field 3.0 technology that gives us both immersive 360 surround sound along with far field noise cancellation that works surprisingly well at blocking out external sound, which really helps with that immersive feel. As for privacy, when maxed out, they sound similar to loud headphones. So yes, those around you can hear them, albeit very muffled but at half volume or lower, they're much quieter, which makes them less awkward to use when you're near someone like on a plane, bus, or funeral. For the best experience out of these glasses, you gotta nail the fit. And because everyone's head, face, and features are different, they give us a lot of options to get it right. The glasses have adjustable temples, wide enough for just about any head size, with a shape that allows them to comfortably sit on your ear, and each side can be angled in three adjustable positions. It also comes with nose pads in three sizes, and they've also optimized the weight distribution to reduce pressure on the bridge of your nose. Aside from that, they even have four TUV, TUV, I think it's TUV Rhineland certifications, which includes a five-star rating for eye comfort, so you know they're going all in on this. And I have to agree, these are honestly some of the most comfortable AR glasses I've worn. So once you connect the compatible device, the glasses will turn on and you'll see that HD display right in front of you then your source will pop up. Like with any other display, at this point, sky's the limit. Hook it up to your PC or laptop to get some work done. Even things with fine details like graphics or writing show up very clear and sharp or hook it up to a media device such as Xreal's Beam Pro for a personal cinema experience to watch movies, catch up with shows and use it while multitasking with other apps. But my personal favorite, I love these for gaming. There's so many ways you can access your library, be it from the cloud, locally, or on a specific device or console. For the latter, I use an HDMI adapter straight into the console to get the best performance out of them. Whether it's Xbox Series X or PS5, even at 1080p, we get a crisp image that looks fantastic with some of these new AAA titles, especially those that can take advantage of 120 hertz. And of course, that also goes for PC gaming, where the extra frames per second could give you an edge in those intense multiplayer games. But you guys probably know this by now, but my favorite way to use them are with handheld consoles. Using their powered USB-C adapter with the Switch, you can upgrade handheld mode from 720p and take full advantage of docked mode on a giant screen at 1080p. And being OLED, it really showcases all those bright and vibrant colors Nintendo is known for. As for the Steam Deck, you don't even need an adapter. It's just plug and play, which makes them a perfect companion to take on the go. So I've been using Xreal glasses back when they were Nreal for both work and gaming. 
I've seen them evolve and improve with each iteration, but this is a big leap. You've got the X1 chip, which gives you that low latency experience, along with three degrees of freedom head tracking. We've got that integrated menu system that I absolutely love with the new display modes, the improved audio. All of that makes them really convenient, and it's why I can easily recommend these to anyone looking to jump into this niche. But I'd also say they're worth considering for those of you who already own a previous version, such as myself. And for those of you who want to go further, they're also releasing a pro version of the ones with a larger 57 degree field of view, thanks to the new optic system, along with a few other upgrades. So now I'll hand it off to you guys. Let me know what you think of them, along with any questions you may have down in the comments. Also, if you're looking to pick up a pair and want to support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links in the description below. Once again, this is Sergio AM. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. If you like this video and want to help us out, click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below so we can talk. Now, if you want to go further, subscribe and ding the bell to stay notified whenever we post a new video. You made it to the end, and I just want you to know that you are the reason we do what we do. This is Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box.